Welcome to 5 Minute School. In today's video, we're going to be talking about protein structure. So to begin the video, I've included this diagram showing you what an amino acid is. It's the basic structure of an amino acid. So we can see we have a carbon chain with a carboxylic acid group on one side and an amine group on the other. So uh, the carboxylic acid group is this carbon with a double bond oxygen and then another oxygen with a hydrogen attached onto the oxygen. And we have an amine group, which is a nitrogen attached to two hydrogens. So what makes amino acids unique to each other is this residual group, which we have on this side chain. And this will vary amongst different amino acids. So to begin the video, we'll talk about the primary structure first. So that's just a linear sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. So it's a long sequence of these amino acids and it forms the primary structure of a protein. So these uh, Amino acids are going to be held together by covalent bonds, otherwise known as peptide bonds. So you have this carboxylic acid group, which will bond to another amine group on an adjacent amino acid. That will be a condensation reaction and water will be removed and will have the formation of a peptide bond. So if you imagine a long chain of amino acids, one's going to have an N terminal and the other will have a C terminal. And that's just on one end of the chain, we'll have this amine group sticking out. And on the other end of the chain, we'll have this uh, carboxylic acid group sticking out. So that is the N and C terminal. And that depends on which amino acid is at the end of the polypeptide chain. Another factor to note is that these residual groups or functional groups don't have a role in the peptide bond. Moving on from the primary structure, we have a secondary structure of a protein and we have uh, hydrogen bonds forming between the main peptide, main chain peptide groups. Examples of secondary structure proteins are the alpha helix and beta sheet. So you can see here we have the alpha helix and here are the beta sheets. And we have hydrogen bonds which are formed between uh, the amide hydrogen and the carbonyl oxygen which is in the backbone of the polypeptide chain. Moving on, we have the tertiary structure of proteins, and these are certain spatial arrangements of these secondary structure proteins. So the alpha helixes or the beta sheets are going to get folded even more to form a tertiary structure. This diagram here represents the tertiary structure. We also can call these these uh, structures globular proteins and these tertiary structures are going to be held together by non-covalent bonds like hydrogen bonds and van der Waal forces. Finally we have the quaternary structure of proteins and that's the arrangement of multifolded protein subunits in a multi subunit complex and the bonding is via non-covalent bonds such as hydrogen bonding and salt bridges we have a dimer which consists of two subunits which make up the quaternary structure and we have uh, a trimer which consists of three subunits. An example of a quaternary structure protein is hemoglobin.